Welcome back to part seven of Practical Bash and Terminal Skills. And today we're talking about the set tool, uh, spelled S-E-D. It's another one of those super common ones that I couldn't live without in my everyday programming life. Set is the tool you wanna use whenever you wanna modify files, whenever you wanna replace one string with another. Let's start with an easy example. I'm again in the Kubernetes repository here. And uh, if we take a look at the uh, readme file in here, it mentions the word Kubernetes a lot. Let's say for whatever reason, we want to replace the word Kubernetes with another word in there. We can use the set tool for this. Now the set syntax is going to look a bit odd if you're not used to it, but it's going to become one of those things uh, that, that just seem very normal quickly. So the set syntax is if you're a VI user, you're very, or a Vim user, you're very, very familiar with that. If not, um, just bear with me for a second. It actually kind of makes sense. It starts with the letter S for substitute, and then there's a slash. It doesn't always have to be a slash. We'll talk more about that in a second. And now you type the word that you want to replace. So that would be Kubernetes. And let's say you want to replace it with Kubernetes. It doesn't have to make sense. And then you specify simply, uh, similar to how we had it on the, the grep tool, you just specify uh, the file. So let's give that a shot. So this led to some interesting results. First of all, it printed the results to, to standard out. So that is the default behavior, um, which is good for us. But interestingly, we can see here on this line, we have Kubernetes IO. By the way, much cooler name. Wonder why they didn't go for that one. But here it then says still Kubernetes IO. So um, apparently it only matched the first result in every line and then stopped. What you can do for that is set the G flag here. If you set the G flag, it will replace everything in that line. So if we take a look at this line again, both are cool Bernetis. Replacing strings in a single file is maybe not that cool. Um, wouldn't it be cooler if we could just maybe refactor our entire code base with a, a single uh, set command? In fact, we can. Let's say we do a set and let's say we want to replace Docker with the much cooler Docker that I just invented this second. And uh, now we want to specify every single Go file. So what we could try is something like this, uh, but we'd run into two issues. First of all, it would print everything to standard out, which would be really, really long. And then we're running into another issue here. Uh, it's actually my shell. I'm using Z shell here, but that doesn't matter. That's saying, hey, I can't expand that many um, files. The, the list is too long. So how many do we have? Let's just expand that with echo and uh, pipe it into word count for words. 12,308, okay, that is quite a long argument list. So apparently that's too long. So it might be better if we work them one by one, but still, of course, we don't wanna do anything manually. So what we could do is use the find command. We could say find in the current directory, name something that matches this pattern here. Let's just try that without anything, just to see what it does. Uh-huh, okay, that uh, prints all the Go files. And then we can use the X arcs, which transforms um, what we piped into here into an argument that is appended to the end of the command. So um, if that sounded a bit odd, if I put echo here, it would basically print echo and then the result. So this would be exactly the same, except for the missing uh, line break because they were all appended as arguments into one echo now. So instead, let's do set s and replace docker with docker with a ck just with a k i don't know doesn't really matter um yeah with the the g flag and now it would print them all to standard out which would be a very very long list and i'm not gonna fire that off instead what we can do is add the minus i option here which is basically in line it says um take that file and write it back into it. Now, depending on what system you're on, I'm on a Mac here, it won't let me just replace the file. What I have to do on a Mac is specify a file ending for the backup file. So it'll replace the, the original file, but it still wants to do a backup. So on, uh, on a Mac, I have to do um, minus I dot back here or any other kind of uh, ending, but you don't have to do that on um, most Linux systems, I think. So let's give it a shot. Let's just run this. I'm expecting this to take quite some time replacing 12,000 files. 
but nevertheless, it's probably going to be a lot faster than most of your IDEs that you could use for um, batch string replacement over 12,000 files. So it didn't, wasn't that long. There was no editing involved. This was the, the original time. You can look at the timestamp here, no cheating. Um, we can now use git status to see what happened. Okay, first of all, we have a lot of back files here. You can delete them uh, in many ways. You could do a git clean xf, for example, which would uh, delete untracked files. If you want to be fancier about it, you could use the same find uh, command here that we used and uh, delete it through here. Or you could just, uh, if your shell can expand it, I probably, probably won't because it'll be too long again. Let's see. Oh no, at least too long. Okay, then let's do the git clean option here, removing a lot of files. So if we do a git status, now we can see that we only have the changed files, which makes sense because we replaced Docker with Docker. So let's do a simple git diff and we can see here the changes are all in there. And it's also because we set the G flag, it was replaced more than just once. So this is the set tool, a very, very useful tool that I use a lot in uh, refactoring. But there's one thing that I said before, um, you don't always have to specify this uh, slash here. So let's say, let me just uh, quickly remove all my git changes here. Um, we've seen before in the grep video that there is something like docker slash docker. I'm using ag here now because it's faster. So let's search for that pattern. There's quite a lot of that. So if we wanted to replace that here, we would run into a bit of a problem because there is a slash in it. So if we do something like set s uh, for substitute docker 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 that doesn't work so how would it know which is a substitution signal and which is the actual um slash here so before you start some crazy escaping which you can just do if i just go back to my find command here what you can do is simply replace the um, symbol that you use so let's maybe use a pound symbol here and now i could edit my docker docker into docker docker like that it would of course be entirely pointless because i could just replace the word docker but let's say maybe um the, the repository is called docker, but uh, this is just called awesome docker. This is again, completely made up, completely pointless, but in real life, you're gonna run into situations um, where stuff like that is very helpful. So let's give it another shot, especially with, with Go, with moving packages around. I've actually written like very, very simple th two or three line bash scripts that uh, have saved me hours of refactoring with these kind of things because it just gets very easy um, to do this on, as you can see, 12,000 files here. So let's check, let's uh, remove the um, back files again. And now let's check, uh, actually what I wanted was the git diff. So let's check here, we can clearly see that we replace this string docker with awesome docker <laughs> uh, and uh, keeping the, the slash intact. So again, you've seen uh, multiple ways you can use standard in for set. No, here was Kubernetes. You could use just the file name here, or you could use a pattern which might fail if this list that you expand is too long. So that was the set command. I really love it. I use it quite a lot, both in scripts and in everyday kind of refactoring work. Hope you learned something today and see you in the next video with the next cool bash and terminal feature.